Great to be here. Thanks for, for coming. Um, and Rolf did a phenomenal job on, of telling us how digitalization does not work. Um, so let's have a look at how it might work. Um, and I would rather, I would even say that we have no choice but to kind of tackle this responsibility head on. Then, then really it is our responsibility to make sure that the world our children will grow up in is according to our values and is a world that we understand and that we can shape. So this is just kind of one industry, but one industry that's very dear to us Germans. This is the automotive industry. Um, uh, you see here that kind of China is now leading experts, exports in automotive. Um, and we, we see somewhat similar developments in all industries. When in 2008, the European economy was about the same size uh, as the US economy, now the US economy is about double the size. So we should ask ourselves, in this shifting paradigms, and this is not just about AI, this is an industrial revolution, and of course AI is a big thing here, but we see all industries shifting, we see all paradigms shifting, um, and we need to be on our toes. So these uh, two charts are what keeps me up at night, other than academic papers. Uh, one is the open positions in Germany. Everybody is looking for, for great people to hire. Right? I mean, we are somewhat lucky. We've been, we've been um, came out of like an, um, uh, in a study as kind of the most attractive startup to work for in Germany. That's probably due to the hype of the technology. Um, but even, our, they, even we struggle to find great people. But everyone I'm talking with, like we're looking uh, for great people to hire. And if you think the current situation is bad, then you have seen nothing yet. Because on the right side, you see what is ahead of us. Because the next 20 years are already in the books. And the next 20 years will be brutal um, with the demographic change that we'll see there. You, you can see basically here on the right hand side, the demographic distribution in Germany. And you see here, so the, these are the people that are about to hit the job market. And these are the people that are about to leave the job market. Right? So, I mean, that's dire. And of course, this is for all industries, but one industry that is especially challenged is um, public government. Right? So these, this is the, uh, what we call Beamte, civil servants, and the distribution uh, of age there. And you can see basically the yellow part of this distribution, it's more or less on their way out over the next years. And we also have 400,000 now, this is now, 400,000 open positions in government. And now we see a critical part leaving. And this critical part is not only a workforce that's talented, they carry knowledge that we have no way to preserve. So we we'll lose their workforce, but we also lose their experience, we we'll lose their knowledge. And I think it's, it's absolutely time, it's critical time now to think about how we can help the remaining ambition, talented people to get all the work done. Because we are like every day, I mean, I don't have to tell you, every day we're, like, we're making things more complex and not less complex. We have like more regulation, more process. So one of the things how we can maybe do digitalization, or if it was absolutely correct, digitalization is not switching off the fax machine. One way we could do that is with AI. And this is what we did with uh, Baden-Württemberg. You may have heard of that, it's called F13. Um, and it's using generative AI to do rather complex stuff. So uh, you all have seen like a generative AI doing chatbots, right? And that's cool. I think there's uh, a lot of great problems for which chatbots are the perfect solution. But there are also solutions that are rather complex. And you see here uh, create generative AI helping you create such beautiful German words like Beschlussvorlage. Yeah? Um, based on proprietary internal information that has to be correct. And that has to be so transparent that the human expert can take responsibility for the outcome. 
And this is where we are leading. Um, and this is what has been mentioned as we're not just building large language models, we're also building category defining innovations. We had multimodality two years before GPT-4. And um, I'll kind of show you one of our kind of recent um, inventions, so to speak. So if you're in Europe, you can't, you're not allowed to use Grok, right? Great. Great to be in Europe. But of course, uh, we see uh, the results shared by our friends from other continents. Um, and this is one great example where Grok uh, tells about, talks about the, the fifth and final North Korean astronaut on the moon and about the poet, the poem this astronaut wrote to his goldfish. And the poem is even included. And because Grok is a trustworthy AI that for every claim gives you a source, the source is included as well. And the source is this tweet at the bottom that includes three words, beautiful moonwalk. So, um, AI has a different kind of intelligence than humans have. And so it can make different mistakes. It can give humans super, superhuman power, but there's also a lot of risk there. And I've been at Blatchley Park uh, talking basically with the leading thinkers in the realm of AI, and our approach there is very different from what some other companies are doing, because I feel we need transparency and control. We need responsibility, not on the side of the tech company. So it's not our responsibility alone to decide what AI outcomes are good or bad, what ideas are permissible in what uh, circumstance. But of course, I mean, we, do, we, are kind of have, we are in a lucky situation that we have customers that are the best enterprises in the world. So we don't really run a B2C tool. But we are tr um, building technology that can give you transparency and can give you control. Um, and uh, like at, at NeurIPS a few days ago, we had three papers about that. Um, I'll show you uh, one example here in a second. So this is um, like a, a test text uh, that is, has some, some ambiguity and some conflicting information. And with our technology, this is not a fake, this is like a screenshot from our technology. With our technology, you can now trace conflicting information that can mean one or the other thing that kind of contradicts itself. And you can see why is AI thinking that a certain response may mean this or may mean that. Here, uh, this example is from employment law, where a termination could be either based on the behavior or on the business situation the company is in. And the letter, I intentionally wrote it that way, can mean both things in a way. And this is what we need. We don't need just a response from the AI that is talking about the um, North Korean um, moonwalk and the poem to the goldfish. But we need the human in a strong position. We need to empower humans to be in control and to orchestrate knowledge and to understand knowledge because the value creation of the future should not be done by AI alone and then we are praying for the AI that's going to be right because we have no way to check it. The knowledge will be created by superhumans, by humans that with the power of AI will be 10 times as efficient and will get rid of all the boring, stupid work that we have to do, myself included, every day. And because our platform and our technology is open, so we are not trying to lock people into our models and our technology, but sovereignty for us means not just that the technology is transparent and open and you can look at every line of code, it also means that we are open to all kinds of other technology. And because that is what we believe in, we also retrofitted our innovation into open source models. So this example that you are now seeing is coming from Llama. So our, like, we have customers that are running a combination of models like Llama, Falcon, like our models, right? In our platform, in our environment, and we are adding our own innovations to these models to make them trustworthy, to make them controllable, um, and to make them 
and to build human machine paradigms that put the human into a strong position. This is our data center, by the way. Yeah, it really looks that cool. It's in Bavaria, by the way, right? So, um, so of course, the next generation of Aleph Alpha, Alpha language models is on its way. I mean, we already have uh, some customers uh, that are uh, giving our early release candidates a run for their money. Uh, but we are also fully integrated with everything open source. So like all our customers can be absolutely certain that we will remain compatible to all future open source models because, of course, Llama 3 is coming. I spoke with Jan. Jan is in the lucky position, so maybe one... Oh, yeah, I have two minutes left, okay. So maybe one word for that. There's a lot of generative AI companies that are building, that are burning venture money to build open source models. They cannot do this forever. But Meta can do this forever, right? So certainly, like if, if Jan and, and uh, Mark stay with that, we'll see probably Lama 12. And we will be compatible. Um, and we also future-proof everything that we're doing. So everything that our customers are now doing um, and the journey we are, we are on with them, we are collecting data, we are curating um, data sets, we are customizing, we are fine-tuning. Future-proof for us means that Every work that you're spending on today's generation, you can carry over to the next generation and the generation after with just the press of a button. Right? Because you don't want to spend all the work on Llama 2 and then Llama 3 comes and you have to start all over again. Right? That's not really what you want to do. And of course, we're building transparency and control, which we, by the way, are open sourcing. Like, so of course, New Europe's, we published our papers at New Europe's, we got a one best paper award, um, and we also published the code. So, of course, eventually, others will probably adapt our technology as well. But, of course, we will fit technology into all open source um, models as well. And, of course, um, because these transformations are difficult, if you want to do more than chat with a PDF, it's difficult. You need integration, you need change processes, you need to build data pipelines. And this is not what we can do by ourselves. And this is why we build a phenomenal partner network so if you are already working with one of these companies, um, you should give them a ping. Um, and if you feel that you want to do something that is maybe worth for us to prioritize, you should also kind of give us a ping, because I'd love to prioritize the work with you. But please don't be mad at me if we can't do it, because we're currently absolutely overrun by inbound. Right? But we, we, are, we are prioritizing. So we want to do the things that really make a difference where we are an important contribution, where our innovation, where our product uh, brings an important innovation. Thanks for your attention, and let's go change the world. <laughs>